To conquer diabetes, should you eat low carb with plenty of meat or low fat with plenty of carbs? Well, wars have been fought over that issue, verbal wars anyway, and today I'll throw in my two cents. Well, here is a question. Could you comment on Mastering Diabetes by Dr. Cyrus Kambata? I, I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name or not, but that's the closest I can come. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty well-known YouTube channel, and I have heard from some of the devotees and some of the followers of uh, Cyrus. And I have heard some, some good uh, testimonies and people saying this has really helped me. And so this person wants to know, what do you think about it? Well, I have to say, first of all, I haven't seen much. I, I watched one particular video, uh, and I did a, uh, a video of my own sort of in response to that where he showed a pretty high spike and then a pretty long <laughs> crash, if you will, and declared that to be more or less normal, which uh, I wasn't real comfortable with. But I thought I'd just go into a couple of, uh, of my own thoughts about it. Uh, I, first of all, I have to say I'm hearing too many people saying it's working for me to say, well, I don't think it could ever work for anybody. That's just the stupidest thing I ever heard of and so forth. Uh, it, it clearly does help some people. So, And I'm all for getting people well whatever means they can find and whatever they care to use. Uh, I tend to think... Uh, that it's going to help people who are younger and slimmer more than those who are older and heavier. Uh, and Cyrus himself is on the young side, uh, at least by my standards. I don't know what his age is, but he's not as old as me, that's for sure. And he's definitely slim and and uh, fit. So that's going to help. Of course, he's a type 1, so that that complicates things a little bit more. But I would say that the, the basically what he's promoting is the whole food, plant-based diet. Don't eat meat. Don't eat much fat at all. Uh, and, and that's common. So I can speak more to that approach than to Cyrus particularly because, like I said, I've only seen one. It wouldn't be fair for me to say a whole lot about him and his channel when I've seen like one of his videos. And I don't even think I watched the whole thing there. So if you're young and slim, it can definitely work. Some people it can work, and and I'm not going to say that if you're old and heavy, it can't work. Um, but uh, I think it would work better for younger people. Uh, I would say this, if you're going to do that and you're going to test yourself a lot, uh, it's probably going to make you nervous because you're going to see some pretty high spikes. So I thought I would use this... Um, a little drawing board to to kind of show the difference between the whole foods, high carb, plant based diet versus the low carb uh, diet that includes usually meat. So here's what it's going to look like if you're eating a whole foods diet and you can make it work. Now, not everybody can make it work. And if you are highly uh, sensitive to carbs and you just can't hardly handle carbs and you eat a high carb diet, uh, it won't look like this, but if you can make it work and it begins to work for you, it's probably going to look like this. You're going to have uh, a spike at your breakfast meal. It's going to be high carb, so naturally you're going to get a high spike. But the one, one positive thing going for this kind of a diet, because there's very little fat, there's nothing to hold it up in the stratosphere for too long. So typically what's going to happen is you're going to crash pretty quick and you're going to go down pretty low. And then you'll kind of bounce back to your baseline level. So, uh, and at that point, you'll go for a while until your next meal or snack. And then you'll go up high again. And you'll crash down very low. And then you'll kind of bounce back to your baseline level. And it goes on and on like that. Now, because you've got highs and lows, what's going to happen is you're going to average a fairly decent blood sugar level if you can make this work. And so even though you're going to end up maybe at 170, 180, 190 milligrams per deciliter, uh, you're going to crash down probably to 70, 60 uh, as uh, the low, and then you'll sort of bounce back. 
So time you average it, it may not be bad. And some, in some cases, people end up with very nice A1Cs. You know, some people will tell me, well, I've, I'm doing the whole foods, plant-based, high carb, and I've got a 4.9. Well, 4.9 is excellent. But this is chances are what's going on with you. You're, you're going up real high, you're going down pretty low, and then you bounce back. Now, if you're eating the low-carb, high-fat diet like I eat and typically recommend, you're not going to go near as high at your meals. You won't go near as low. So it's going to look much flatter, this, this, this curve of eating. Of course, there's going to be some bounce to almost any meal you eat, but it won't, it won't, be, it won't be nearly uh, so much. Now, this kind of a person, the low-carb, high-fat, they could end up at a 4.9 as well. So you could have both patterns yielding the same A1C. And you say, well, then it hardly matters. Well, I'm not sure about that. I will say this. Uh, people like Cyrus and, and other uh, many other, I won't say all, but many other of the low-fat, high carb plant based whole foods diet will admit they they almost have to admit that you can get low you can get a good a1c by going low carb and high fat almost anybody would have to admit it because it's just true and there's just no denying it but uh, what they will typically tell you is that yeah it, it, you'll lose weight on keto you will get your A1C down on keto, but it's not really good in the long run. And it's going to hurt you eventually. It's going to clog those arteries. You're going to get a heart attack. It's just bad, bad, bad in the long run. But yeah, temporarily, it'll do you good. You'll lose weight. Your A1C will come down. They'll admit that much. Now, those of us on the low-carb side of things, we kind of push it from the other angle. We will admit sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes people can get good A1Cs and fairly good overall glucose doing this up and down, up and down, up and down kind of a lifestyle where you're eating high carbs. Of course, you're going to have higher spikes. And uh, typically, the people that really push this up and down kind of a glucose level, they don't want you to test yourself much because if you do, you'll get depressed. You'll find your glucose at 180, 200, 220, you know, at the top end. And uh, that, that'll that just make you discouraged. So they don't really encourage you to test your glucose much. And that what they will say is, yeah, but check out your A1C after a while. And in many cases, not all, but in, in some cases, I guess I should say, the A1C comes out okay for some. So let's say you do the up and down, up and down, up and down. You get a 4.9 or a 5.0 or a 5.1. Or another, your, your neighbor, he does the low carb, high fat, and he gets a 4.9, 5.0, 5.1. So you're both in the same range, but you've got a totally different glucose pattern uh, between the two of you. Now, again, the, the whole foods, high carb person is going to say, oh, you're just, you're just killing yourself with all that fat. The low-carb person is going to say, man, you're messing yourself with all those spikes and drops, spikes and crashes, spikes and crashes. So it kind of depends. Now, let, before I put my little board down, let me just give you one more thing to consider. And that is what happens when you do the worst of all. And that is you eat a high-fat plus a high-carb diet. Typically, you'll go high but you won't crash down so much like you would if you had a low fat. So you'll go high and you'll stay high quite a while and then slowly work your way down and then you'll have another meal and you'll go high and stay high kind of a long way. So you're, you're prolonging your high glucose, which is the worst thing you want to do. You don't want to prolong it. If you've got to go high, <laughs> then at least try to get down low as quick as you can. And typically for many people, that uh, whole foods, plant-based, high-carb diet will do that. It'll take you up, but you'll come down pretty quick. Take you up, come down pretty quick. Low-carb, you're just kind of floating around in the middle somewhere. You don't go up very far. You don't crash down very far. Now, I personally believe the low-carb, uh, high-fat diet is, is superior. Not just slightly superior, but quite a bit superior. You say, well, Dennis, you're biased. Yeah, I am. I admit, I admit it. Although I tried to go uh, that plant-based, uh, vegetarian, 
a low fat diet in my early stages and it just drove my blood sugar crazy. And I, I was bouncing all over the place and half the time I was about to faint and it, it was just terrible for me. But for some, it clearly works. Um, why do people like this idea of giving up meat and going for the low fat approach? Well, I think there are a couple of reasons. One reason is uh, it's almost a religion for some people. Some people, it's their life. Their diet is their life. Now, let me just let you know a secret about me. My diet is not my life. My life is a whole lot bigger than my diet. And this whole thing about diabetes, well, it's because I have to do it to stay healthy. I have to watch my carbs. I have to eat the low-carb diet. And uh, But it's not my life by any means. I've, my life is a whole lot bigger than this. And this YouTube channel is not my life. Some people, their YouTube channel is their life and it's their baby. And I admit I put a lot of work in this YouTube channel, but it is not my life by any means, nor is it my God. You know, my God is the God who created heaven and earth. But for some of the vegans and some of these whole foods people, their diet is their God. And uh, they practically worship their diet and their lifestyle. Uh, that's just not how it is with me. But for, so some people, they have a vested interest in their vegan diet or their whole foods diet working and, and being the right one. Because if, if they have to admit it's not right, it's like their God has just died. And let me just share one very important reason why I believe the low-carb, high-fat diet is significantly superior to the low-fat, high-carb diet. When I was first attacked with diabetes, almost 20 years ago, almost nobody was talking much about the problem of high insulin levels, with the exception, as far as I know of, doctors Michael and Mary Eads. Since that time, there has been an explosion of research and discoveries about just how harmful high insulin levels can be. Dr. Jason Fung has led the way on this, but he's not by any means the only one who has asserted that high insulin levels are terribly detrimental to human health and are, in fact, the major root of insulin resistance and eventually type 2 diabetes. And since this is true, what this means is that anything that leads to high insulin levels should be avoided, and anything that leads to low insulin levels should be embraced and joyfully accepted. And what is it that leads to high insulin levels, which can cause so much damage to us? Well, of course, we all know the answer. It is a high-carbohydrate diet that leads to high glucose spikes. The higher your glucose spikes, the higher your insulin levels will be. And the problem is those insulin levels will remain elevated long after your glucose has dropped down into the basement. So the person who's eating a high-carb diet with their blood sugar spiking and plummeting, spiking and plummeting, will be going through their day with high insulin levels as their pancreas desperately tries to keep up with those steep spikes. On the other hand, the person who eats a low-carb diet will have very minimal glucose spikes which will result in a very small insulin release. So a dinner of a baked potato, corn on the cob, a piece of bread, and a biscuit with honey on it is going to produce huge amounts of insulin in your blood, even if your blood somehow does drop down after a couple of hours. But the person who eats a piece of roasted chicken, an avocado, and a garden salad, there'll be very tiny insulin rise. Their pancreas will recognize that the glucose level is just not that much and will see little need to release prodigious amounts of insulin to cover those few carbohydrates. So even if two different people can maintain equal A1Cs, one on a low-carb diet and the other on a low-fat diet, the person with the high-carb, low-fat diet is going to have far higher levels of insulin to deal with. Now, if that was just an occasional thing here and there, it would be no problem. But for people to go day after day, month after month, and year after year, with huge amounts of insulin flooding through their bloodstream, creating a condition of fat storage, and making their body more and more resistant to that very insulin it has to constantly deal with, well, that's just not a very healthy situation, to say the least. 
Okay, that's it for now. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up so the YouTube algorithm is going to recognize its value and promote it to others. And consider subscribing to our channel and then click that little bell icon so you'll be notified whenever we post new videos. God bless. See you again soon.